On today's episode, the Chicago Blackhawks dropped their eighth consecutive game over the weekend, falling 6-3 to three to the New Jersey Devils. I'll go over the updated Tankathon standings, and I'll also talk about Jonathan Taves returning to the lineup for the first time in over two months. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today is Monday, April 3rd. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you can also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And real quick, if you're a first time listener of the show, or even if you're a consistent listener and you haven't done so already, please help me out by making sure to show some support. Go and subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is 100% for free and helps me out tremendously. While you're there, make sure to hit that like button, go and comment down below, and turn on those push notifications so that you can get notified when the episode gets uploaded to YouTube each and every day. And for you audio folks, also make sure to go and follow the podcast 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcast. And you can also go and leave me a review on either Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, which I would greatly appreciate. And you're also going to have to do that anyway to qualify for the two free Blackhawks tickets that I'll be giving away uh, to the game on April 10th against the Minnesota Wild, which is just one week from today. We're in the final days of the drawing. So make sure to go do all of that good stuff, folks. I greatly appreciate all of your support. All right, enough of that. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all, as always, for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And thank you all for making the show your very first listen here to start off your day. Over the weekend, the Chicago Blackhawks only had one game of action as they were wrapping up their four-game homestand against the New Jersey Devils, one of the biggest surprises, maybe even the biggest surprise in the entire NHL this season, and also one of the fastest teams in the entire NHL as well. The Devils play with such a remarkable pace, and uh, as the game progressed, that's really, in my opinion, what gave the Blackhawks the biggest issues handling this Devils team defensively. Uh, They actually got off to a pretty decent start, though, as we've seen a lot from this Blackhawks team in the past couple of weeks. Very uneventful and boring opening 20 minutes to this game, which to be fair is kind of how I think, as I've talked about many times on the show, how the Blackhawks have to play at this point in time. If they do want to keep games close and they want to stay in the game, it's probably going to have to be low scoring because you go and look at this team on paper. They just don't have the offensive firepower to be scoring three, four, five goals a game. In fact, it's been, it's been a problem for them scoring two or three goals uh, over the past couple of weeks. So uh, that Yeah, that's kind of how the Blackhawks have to go about things. And it's just, as a fan, with nothing left in the season worth playing for, it makes it even tougher to watch this team when they play that style. But I do understand uh, kind of why they have to play that way. First period, though, pretty uneventful, no scoring. But then in the second period, that's when things really started to pick up for both sides, in fact. And the Blackhawks actually were the ones who got out to a 2-1 to lead despite surrendering the opening goal of the game. And who else but the two guys who have really been leading the charge offensively as of late with, with uh, each of the goals for the Blackhawks in the second period and Tyler Johnson and Lucas Reichel. Johnson winds up finding the back of the net for a third consecutive game, his 11th of the season, after uh, getting a piece of a centering pass from Taylor Radish. And then our baby boy, Lucas Reichel, just keeps on finding ways to make an impact despite uh, not playing, you know, with the most productive offensive players. He gets a piece of Andreas Athanasiu shot for his Sixth goal of the season and third in the last five games. Love seeing Lucas Reichel continue to make these noticeable progressions and a heck of a redirect. Really good hand-eye coordination on display there from Reichel to give the Blackhawks a two-to-one lead. And by the way, after this game, Coach Luke Richardson did provide us with a little bit of insight on the plans for not only Reichel, but another Blackhawks youngster that's up in the NHL right now. First, the plan for Reichel is for him to remain in the NHL for these 
final six games. And then uh, obviously once the season comes to a close, they're going to reassign him down to Rockford uh, and hopefully he'll be lead, uh, leading their charge in the Calder Cup playoffs. I was curious though, to see if Kyle Davidson was going to send uh, Lucas Reichel back down to the AHL, given the Ice Hogs struggles here as of late. And for all you listeners out there who haven't checked out my episode that I dropped late on Friday night, early Saturday morning, uh, it was a complete update on the Rockford Ice Hogs, where they sit in the standings, which players have been doing well for them, how they need to qualify for the Calder Cup playoffs. I discussed all of that in an episode on Friday, strictly based on the Rockford Ice Hogs. So if you want more insight on the Blackhawks AHL affiliate, make sure to go click on the channel and check out that video. While you're there, make sure to hit the subscribe button, smash that like button as well. Really would appreciate that, folks. But yeah, it looks like the plan is for Reichel to remain up in the NHL. I was thinking that, you know, with the Ice Hogs kind of on a skid here recently, maybe they want to return the head honcho down to Rockford to kind of help get things going. But it sure seems like uh, as far as Reichel's development, the front office has kind of trumped that in terms of the overall team success down in the AHL, which I do, I do think is the right decision. I mean, Lucas Reichel is one of the high-end forward prospects that the Blackhawks have in their system right now, and really the only one who's kind of ready to step on the NHL scene as of this moment. The Blackhawks, most of their high-end forward prospects, they just took in the 2022 NHL draft. So a couple of years away, I understand why they want to be giving Reichel as much NHL ice time as possible right now, because in all likelihood, that's where he's going to be for uh, hopefully all of next season. Um, but yeah, there's the insight on Reichel. <clears throat> he is going to be around for the final six games. Alex Vlasic is a little bit different. Richardson said that Vlasic will play in each of the Blackhawks three games during their West Coast road trip that starts on Tuesday against the Calgary Flames. But once the Blackhawks do return home, Vlasic is going to get reassigned to the Rockford Ice Hogs and join them for their playoff push. So there's kind of the timeline on uh, two of the Blackhawks' top youngsters that are up in the NHL as of this moment. But yeah, thanks to Johnson, thanks to Reichel, the Blackhawks had a 2-1 to one lead late in the uh, second period, but then in the final few minutes, things... Uh, started to turn ugly, and that's really where New Jersey started to get their momentum. They struck twice in the final five minutes of the min of the middle frame, a really sloppy end to the period by the Blackhawks, uh, and they wind up giving the lead right back to the Devils. New Jersey would go on to add a goal early on in the third period to extend their lead to 4-2. to two. Andreas Athanasiu would make things interesting with a late goal to cut the Blackhawks' deficit to one, but they just weren't able to muster up, muster up enough in the third period to come back and tie this game up. In fact, the Blackhawks only had four shots on goal in the final 20 minutes. They also only had four shots on goal in the opening 20 minutes. They finish with just a total of 17 on the night. That's not going to be good enough to take down this New Jersey Devils high-flying offense. The Devils will go on to add a couple of more late in the third period to seal this one up. Final score, 6-3 to three at the United Center as the Blackhawks have now dropped eight consecutive games. Not all bad news, though, from the Blackhawks loss, Hawks fans. I'll talk in a moment about how this loss impacts them in the Tankathon standings, but I also have to talk about the, the main good news that we had from this game on Saturday night, which was the return of number 19, the captain, Jonathan Taves. And kind of a weird timeline of how everything progressed last week. Um, talked about this on the episode Friday morning, of course, before we knew of this news. We heard Taves say to the media, say to John Dietz of the Daily Herald that, you know, it's possible that he joins the team for the upcoming three-game road trip, but I guess Taves was feeling good enough to rejoin the Blackhawks lineup for this matchup on Saturday night against the New Jersey Devils. Certainly a welcome surprise, though, as Taves missed over two months due to post-COVID and chronic immune response syndrome. Obviously, there were talks of uh, not only him being shut down for the rest of the year and not returning to the Blackhawks, but also possibly of retiring in the offseason as well, which uh, I'm sure is still on the table. There's a lot that Jonathan Taves has to figure out. He said, you know, He's not there at this point when asked by the Blackhawks media about this, but uh, it's a day-to-day -day process. I've said that a lot with Taves, and I'm sure he's going to be trying to figure out that answer himself over the summer. But uh, for now, Taves is back on the ice playing in-game action, which all of us Blackhawks fans, uh, I mean, have to be grateful for. The fact that we're getting more 
games out of Jonathan Taves after, look, I, I was always an optimist that Taves was going to play again, maybe not this season, but it wasn't going to be the end of the road for him until I heard that report from John Dietz saying that two separate sources uh, told him that Taves is strongly considering retirement in the offseason. That was the first time it hit me like, wow, maybe Jonathan Taves isn't coming back. But uh, after everything he's been through for him to be able to get back on the ice for the Blackhawks, yeah, it, it has to be uh, just looked at as such a blessing for us Blackhawks fans because just a couple of weeks ago, we didn't think this was going to be possible. And I'm sure it has to feel good for Jonathan Taves to be able to, to get back on the ice and join his teammates. And it was kind of cool hearing him talk about uh, getting nervous. Like you think about a guy like Jonathan Taves, all the big games he's played in, you know, won gold medals, uh, won Stanley Cups, won everything there is to win in the game of hockey, basically. And for him to still be, you know, getting nervous about his return, uh, I thought that was pretty cool and uh, just shows how special of a moment it was. And he also talked about, you know, hearing the roars of the fans at the United Center when he stepped back out on the ice. Shout out to all the Blackhawks fans that were there in attendance on Saturday night. A pretty good crowd for the Blackhawks. Final uh, weekend home game of the entire season, giving Jonathan Taves the round of applause that he certainly uh, deserves. Taves started off the night on the Blackhawks' fourth line, skating with Austin Wagner and Reese Johnson. Obviously, that was just to kind of get him back in there and get him kind of loose and warmed up and uh acclimated with the speed of the game since he's been out for two months and hadn't seen any game action. I mean, he only had been practicing for like two or three days. So it was a pretty uh, quick turnaround for Jonathan Taves, but all in all, I thought he handled it really well. And um, Luke Richardson eventually as the game went on, started to give him more shifts up in the top six. He skated with Andreas Athanasiu and Lucas Reichel late in the game. And in fact, Taves wound up picking up, picking up a primary assist on Andreas Athanasio's goal there in the third period, in addition to winning eight of 12 faceoffs in his 14 minutes of ice time. So all in all, in my mind, I thought it was a pretty darn good return for the Blackhawks captain. But the fact that he's just back on the ice in and alone of itself, regardless of how he plays, um, the fact that he's back on the ice at the UC, wearing the Hawks sweater with the C on his shoulder, uh, that's the important part. That's the significant part. We have to be grateful for that. So um, make sure to enjoy these final six games, Blackhawks fans. I know there's nothing left for this team to be playing for, and it's pretty hard to be watching them at this point in time, but it could very well be the final six games that we get of Captain Jonathan Taves in a Chicago Blackhawks sweater. All right, coming up in just a moment, Hawks fans, I will talk about how the Blackhawks 6-3 loss to the New Jersey Devils impacted them in the Tankathon standings, which is six games left in the season. But first, I need to talk to you all about Athletic Greens and their new AG1 product, which is something that I use every single morning. I actually just finished it before I hopped on the show and started recording because with just one scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins and minerals, probiotics, and more to help you start your day. And this special blend of ingredients is truly incredible, folks. It helps support your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, and even your aging. And Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews and is recommended by both health experts and professional athletes. Plus, it'll cost you less than $3 per day, which is such a cheap and easy way to invest in both your health and your body. And to make it easy for all of you, Athletic Greens is going to give away a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D along with five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go and visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and to pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Real quick, before I get into segment two, we're down to the final day to enter my two, two free Blackhawks tickets that I'm giving away my uh, raffle, I guess you could call it, that I'll be giving away two free Blackhawks tickets to the game on April 10th, which is a week from today, the second to last home game of the season against the Minnesota Wild. It's really easy. All you got to do in order to qualify is three simple things. One, you got to go and leave me a review on either Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Two, make sure to drop the name of your YouTube channel in that review. And three, you got to be subscribed 
<clears throat> to lock down Blackhawks on YouTube. Excuse me. The reason why you need to drop the name of your YouTube channel in your review is because that's how I'm going to be checking that you're subscribed to the channel. You got to do all three things in order to qualify for the two free Blackhawks tickets on April 10th against the Minnesota Wild. So make sure to go do all of that here real quick. All right, segment two, let's get into an updated look at the Tankathon standings. And I'll tell you what, Hawks fans, the Blackhawks just keep on killing the game right now as they, of course, have lost eight consecutive games following their 6-3 to three loss against the New Jersey Devils on Saturday night. And they are still two points clear of last place. They are sitting pretty with six games to go here in the NHL regular season. You gotta love it. No one's been tanking better than the Chicago Blackhawks over the last couple of weeks. As I mentioned, following their 6-3 loss to the Devils, they've dropped eight consecutive games. That gives them a 24-46-6 record through 76 games. 54 points on the year with a points percentage of .355. It's been heading in the right direction the past couple of weeks. The Anaheim Ducks, believe it or not, are now the team that's closest to the Chicago Blackhawks in the standings. Anaheim is now in second to last as they've lost eight consecutive games. If anyone's been tanking as good as the Blackhawks, it's been the Anaheim Ducks. Just about a week ago, they were in fourth place. Looked to be, you know, maybe the team that has the uh, most unlikely chance of finishing in dead last. Now nah, they've been doing a phenomenal job. They've lost eight games in a row, just like the Chicago Blackhawks. That has them sitting at 23, 44, and 10 with 56 points through 77 games, though. They have played one more game than the Blackhawks at this point. They have a points percentage of 0.364. So that game in hand is certainly something to keep in mind as we uh, wrap up the season here in the next week and a half. The Columbus Blue Jackets are now the team in third to last place. They're 24, 44, and 8 on the season. 56 points through 76 games. Same as the Blackhawks, one less than the Ducks as well, giving them a points percentage of .368. And not only did the Ducks find a way to scratch and claw their way into overtime against the Boston Bruins last Thursday, but they also beat the Ottawa Senators 4-3 to in overtime on Sunday. Ah, Three points in the last three games for the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's exactly what the Blackhawks needed them to do. They've now not only jumped the Hawks, but also jumped the Anaheim Ducks and are in third to last place in the NHL standings. And then the San Jose Sharks, who are doing such a marvelous job of tanking for quite a while. Uh, they actually defeated the Arizona Coyotes 7-2 to on Saturday for their third consecutive win that now has them at 22 39 and 15 on the season giving them 59 points through 76 games a points percentage of 0.388 wow tough for the sharks they are now uh five points out of last place with six games to go they do have a tough schedule coming up. I looked at it. They might have the toughest schedule out of any of these four teams to close it up. They have back-to-back -back games against the Colorado Avalanche and then uh, finish up the season with a three-game road trip as well. But if I had to guess, folks, I feel like 59 points, hmm, that would mean the Ducks would have to win two more games to jump them. Columbus would have to win two more games to jump them. The Blackhawks would have to win three more games in their final six to jump them. I don't want to put a jinx on it, but I, I almost feel like the Sharks are out of this race now because they've won three consecutive games. Of course, they could still win the number one overall pick. It's going to come down to a draft lottery, but you want the best percentage chance of landing that number one overall pick. So I personally think this, this is down to a three-horse race, Blackhawks fans, between the Hawks, the Ducks, and the Columbus Blue Jackets. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe, you know, the Sharks lose all six here. But if I feel like if they win another game, it's most certainly over for them as far as finishing in uh, last place. But good stuff for the Blackhawks over the weekend. San Jose keeps picking up victories. Columbus beat the Coyote or uh, Columbus, excuse me, beat Ottawa in overtime. It's been good news for the Blackhawks. They certainly could use a, a victory from the Anaheim Ducks, a victory or two in their final five games since they've played one more game than Chicago, Anaheim, and San Jose at this point. In my mind, it feels like a three-horse race. The Blackhawks have been doing a phenomenal job. We'll see if they can keep it up as they kick off their three-game road trip on Tuesday night out in Calgary. 
All right, coming up in just a moment, Blackhawks fans, I still have to get into our weekly Mailbag Monday fan segment, where I answer a question from a couple of lucky listeners right here on Lockdown Blackhawks. But first, I need to talk to you all about FanDuel. We're getting down the home stretch of the NBA regular season, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, which is America's number one sports book. Because if you're a new customer, you'll get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back if your bet doesn't win. You just got to download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, which is safe, secure, and super easy to use. And for all you Bulls fans out there, you definitely got to check out FanDuel because you can bet on everything Bulls there from their money line to the point spread to player points props. And you can even bet on the amount of threes made by Zach Levine, Io DeSumo, or DeMar DeRozan. Plus, FanDuel allows you the opportunity to combine your bets for a chance at a greater payout with the same game parlay feature. So don't miss out on the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to a thousand dollars and bonus bets back. That's if your bet doesn't win. All you got to do is go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, before I wrap up the show for today, folks, of course, still got to get into our weekly Mailbag Monday fan segment. And by the way, for a second consecutive week, didn't really get all that much interaction with the listeners out there on Twitter. So if you're still tuned into this point of the episode, if you're still wanting to hear me answer questions live on the show, make sure to reach out and ask me your question. Hit me up on Twitter. You can email LockdownBlackhawks at gmail.com. Slide into any of my DMs. I love answering questions here live on the show. I get it's the end of the season. The Blackhawks aren't all that intriguing at this point. But please, if you have a question, please reach out. I greatly appreciate the help. I really like doing this segment, and I want to keep it rolling. So uh, hopefully next week I'll be able to answer some more questions. But I need a little help from all of you, the listeners, in order to do that. Greatly appreciate it. All right, the first question I wanted to answer here today comes from Casey Fembler, who emailed in the podcast over the weekend and asked, What's the sorry? I had a hiccup. What's the ideal playoff situation for the Blackhawks with draft picks? So I was assuming this was uh, Casey was talking about what us Blackhawks fans should be rooting for. <sighs> Coffee hiccups are hitting me right now. When the Stanley Cup playoffs kick off here in just a couple of weeks, so obviously the main one that I think will come to everyone's mind is the Patrick Kane trade, where the Blackhawks received a conditional. Uh, 2023 second round pick that can become a first if the Rangers are able to reach the conference finals. And I'll tell you what, the Rangers certainly have been starting to find their groove here as of late. Patrick Kane seems to have finally started to establish some chemistry with his new teammates, and they seem to be playing some of their best hockey at the most important time of the season. And, you know, anytime you have a guy like Igor Shosturkin in that When you have a goalie like that, I believe you always have a chance. For me, it's hard not to go with Tampa Bay or New York coming out of the Eastern Conference, but make no mistake about it, the East is absolutely loaded this year. I know a lot of people, for obvious reasons, like the Boston Bruins, the Carolina Hurricanes are a team that people are clinging to, even the New Jersey Devils, who I personally think are just a little bit too young probably to go and win a Stanley Cup at this point. I still think there's no denying that they have the skill to win a couple of rounds and maybe, you know, get hot. That's just how things go in the Stanley Cup playoffs. So it's going to be really competitive out East, but I I really think at the end of the day, the Rangers are just simply too talented. I think they have a good opportunity to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Us Blackhawks fans will be rooting for them, even though it's making me want to throw up even thinking about cheering for Jacob Truba, who in my opinion is uh, the dirtiest player in the NHL. And I still can't believe he's, wearing a C and being a captain of that team. And I'll tell you what, if the New York Rangers go on to win the Stanley Cup, that will be a tough ceremony to watch if Jacob Truba lifts the Stanley Cup first. I mean, that, ugh. That'll be like get, getting teeth pulled, basically. Um, But I do think, maybe as much as I don't want it to happen, I do think the Rangers have a really good team. Uh, hopefully they just get to the Eastern Conference Finals and lose. That would be best case scenario for the Blackhawks as they would get a first round pick ultimately in the Patrick Kane trade. And then the other one to keep in mind is the Tampa Bay Lightning because the Blackhawks, uh, of course, have Tampa Bay's first round pick for not only this year, but next season as well. It is 
top 10 protected. Obviously, that's not a worry for this year. Probably isn't going to be a worry for the Bolts next season, if I had to guess. Um, but what would help out the Blackhawks is if the Tampa Bay Lightning get bounced maybe in the first round. I personally don't see that happening. But if they do, that means the Blackhawks would receive an earlier first round pick as part of that trade for Brandon Hagel. So an early exit from the Tampa Bay Lightning would help the Blackhawks out. And then also the New York Rangers reaching the Eastern Conference Finals would give them an additional first round pick. The second question I wanted to answer today comes from Matt DeMichael93 on Twitter, who asked, could Gavin Hayes be the next coming of Jason Robertson? Matt actually asked me this question a couple of weeks ago, and I missed it, which I apologize for. Matt, if you're tuning into the show, better late than never. Am I right, my guy? Um, I don't want to say let's uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. And look, Gavin Hayes just had a mammoth season with the Flint Firebirds of the OHL. 41 goals and 40 assists for 81 points in 66 games, mostly as a top-line winger for the Firebirds. Uh, For being a third-round pick of the Blackhawks, his ascension this season was absolutely marvelous to watch. Seeing him take a step in the goal-scoring and playmaking department and really being an offensive leader for that Flint Firebird team absolutely has me excited for Gavin Hayes. And in fact, it makes me wonder, like, I just didn't see anything all that impressive out of Gavin Hayes during Blackhawks prospect development camp. And to be fair, I was focusing maybe on a a couple of other guys and there were other players who kind of had more of a standout performance in camp than Gavin Hayes did. But I, I mean, I didn't have him in my top 10 prospect list going into the season. He might have to find his way creeping into the top 10 based on the year that he had this season, but to say he's the next Jason Robertson, Let's let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Also, Robertson was an early second round pick, probably should have been a first. Um, he was the 39th overall selection. Gavin Hayes was a third round pick, the 66th overall pick. So uh, a little bit later of a prospect. Um, look, I'd love for Gavin Hayes to be the next Jason Robertson. Do I think he has the talent to do it? Possibly, but we just don't really know enough at this point. And while it is impressive what he's doing in the OHL, um, it's still junior hockey. He is still very young to his credit. I mean, he's doing everything right. There's no knock here on Gavin Hayes, but he's still going to have to prove it next year again, probably in the O and whenever he does get called up, obviously there's more steps for him to take. I don't want to just, you know, go and throw him in the same conversation as Jason Robertson, who's an a hundred point score, 40 goal scorer. I'm not going to throw Gavin Hayes in that conversation. What I will say though, is I do believe he has the potential to be a very solid middle round pick for the Chicago Blackhawks. And let's not forget Kyle Davidson has acquired a lot of not only first round picks, but second and third round selections over the next couple of NHL drafts too. If he continues to draft well, like we think he did in 2022, the Blackhawks prospect pool is only going to deepen and deepen these next couple of years. That has me excited. I used to not get excited about third round picks, but based on what Kyle Davidson's been able to do in one NHL draft. I mean, third round pick Gavin Hayes, third round pick Aiden Thompson, third round pick Samuel Savoy. Those are three prospects that us Blackhawks fans are rightfully excited about. They all came in the third round. So I like Gavin Hayes' progression. I'm not going to compare him to Jason Robertson as of yet, um, but certainly a very strong campaign for Hayes with the Firebirds. I'm excited to see what his next step is in the development process. All right, folks, I think that is going to wrap up Monday, April 3rd's episode of Locked On Blackhawks. Thank you all again for tuning into the show and make sure to go and follow the podcast 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcast and go and subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube. And that way you can get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each and every day. Once again, I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you can also check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until tomorrow's episode, that's going to do it here for the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.